Welcome back everyone to 7.1 Integration by Parts. In this video we have three more examples to go over with you and there's some pretty exciting ones. Uh, the first one we've never been able to integrate natural log. The second one we've never been able to integrate any of our inverse trig functions. So the claim is integration by parts helps with those things. Let's see how. Alright, so let's try to apply integration by parts to this problem here. So as usual, we need to decide what is my u and what is my dv. Well, we can't let dv be the natural log of x dx because we don't know how to integrate that thing. So really, the only choice is to let u be equal to the natural log of x because at least we can take the derivative of that. And then the remainder, dx, will have to be our dv. Okay. So let's try to write this down and solve this problem. So u is going to be my natural log of x, and dv is going to be dx. If I take the derivative of u, I get du, which is 1 over x, uh, dx. And then if I integrate dv, I get v, which is going to be x. Now according to the integration by parts, we have this integral is equal to uv, so I'm going to write x natural log of x minus the integral of v du. So v is x and du is 1 over x dx. All right, these things cancel out. And so I get x natural log of x. And then minus, and when I integrate, I guess, 1 dx, I get x plus my constant of integration. Okay, this was all for indefinite integrals. And the claim is we can do this for a definite integral. So when I do this for a definite integral, remember, I have to evaluate from 1 to 2. So we'll evaluate this from 1 to 2 minus the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 dx. And let's see. So when I evaluate x natural log of x at 2, I get 2 natural log 2 minus 1 natural log 1. Uh, but the natural log of 1 is 0. Minus... And when I integrate 1, I get x, and I evaluate from 1 to 2. So I get 2 natural log of 2 minus, and now 2 minus 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. Uh, so my final answer is just going to be 2 natural log of 2 minus 1. All right, and that is all there is to it. So let's try another example here, pretty similar. Uh, at least in the strategy, we have the arc tangent or tangent inverse of 5x. This is the thing we want to integrate. We've never been able to do this before. Uh, so let's go ahead and try integration by parts, as we are in 7, 1. Uh, and likewise, you know, to the previous problem, we can't let my dv be tangent inverse because we don't know how to integrate that. So let's let u be tangent inverse of 5x. And then dv is going to be dx. Okay, so I take the derivative of u to get du, and I know how to take the derivative of tangent inverse. Right, This is our 1 over, uh, and then this is going to be 5x quantity squared plus 1, and then the chain rule says I need to multiply by 5, or 5 uh, dx. And now when I integrate dv, I get x. Okay, so according to integration by parts, my integral should then be equal to uv, so I'm going to write x times tangent inverse of 5x, minus the integral of v du. So v is my x, and du is this complicated thing, so let's kind of simplify it a little bit. Uh, and I'll write, uh, let's see, 5x would be on top, and then divided by 25x squared, right, when I expand out that squared, uh, plus 1. And then this is going to be dx. Okay, now I have to think about how am I going to integrate this, right? And so you have to stare at it for a little bit, uh, but eventually we'll realize, hey, normal u substitution will work in this case. Uh, so I will use u equals the denominator, 25x squared plus 1. And then du is going to be 50x dx. Uh, and we see this will work because I have that x in the numerator. So I can rewrite this as du over 10 is equal to 5x dx because that's what I have to trade in. 
All right, so then my integral is going to be 1 over u, use that denominator, and then instead of that 5x dx, I'm going to write du over 10. Okay, so now I'm going to try to combine a few steps here. Let's do minus 1 tenth, pull out that constant. And then when I integrate 1 over u, I would get natural log of the absolute value of u. And u is just this 25x squared plus 1. And then, of course, uh, well, because this thing's positive, I don't actually need the absolute values. I could just put this in normal parentheses. And then finally, plus my constant of integration. And there we are. That is my final answer. And now we can uh, integrate kind of some of these inverse trig functions. Okay, I have one more example for us, and this one's a bit of a doozy. It turns out sometimes uh, integration by parts can be used twice, uh, like in this example here. We'll use it twice, and it'll kind of wrap around on itself to help us solve for uh, this integral. So you're going to have to take a little bit of a leap of faith here uh, as I guide us through this one. The claim is just hold on until the end, and you'll see kind of what happens, and it'll make more sense. So again, we're going to apply uh, integration twice, integration by parts twice. Um, so let's get to it. Uh, we have to choose a u and we have to choose a dv. Uh, and the claim is that we just need to be consistent. So really, either one of these we know how to take the derivative of, we know how to take the integral of. Um, so I'm going to choose u is cosh, hyperbolic cosine of 2x. And then my dv is going to be then e to the x dx. When I integrate that, I just get e to the x. And when I take the derivative of hyperbolic cosine, I get hyperbolic sine. Uh, hyperbolic sine of 2x uh, dx. And chain rule says I would need a 2 out in front. There we go. So therefore, according to integration by parts, uh, this is going to be equal to uv. So let's see, that's going to be e to the x hyperbolic cosine of 2x minus the integral of v du. So e to the x, my du is 2 hyperbolic sine of 2x dx. And let me go ahead and spend a second here to rearrange this. Uh, so we know we can pull out constants from our integral. Uh, so I'm going to cheat and use the powers of technology here. So I'm going to pull out this 2, quite literally. And this is the thing now that I want to evaluate. If I can figure out this integral, the claim is I win, right? Well, uh, it looks a lot like the first integral, right? You can see it doesn't really seem like if I do integration by parts, again, anything's going to go away, kind of like the x to the powers do, uh, like x or x squared that we've seen. But the claim is x to the cube, stuff like that uh, would also work. So we're going to use integration by parts again. And uh, like I mentioned before, we're going to stay consistent. So since I chose u to be my hyperbolic function from before, I'm going to let it be it again. And my dv then has to be then e to the x dx. So just do an integration by parts here a second time to evaluate what is this green integral here. So e to the x sine or hyperbolic sine of 2x dx. Uh, so in this case, it's uv. So I'm going to write e to the x, uh, let's see, hyperbolic sine of 2x minus the integral of v du. So e to the x and then du is 2 hyperbolic cosine of 2x. Oops, I forgot my dx. There we go. Okay, and again, we will pull out this 2. Do, 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 do. And now I'm going to go ahead and substitute this in to my equation up here. So again, using the magic depth technology here, this is the same as it is uh, down here. And so I'm going to substitute in my result. So let me go ahead and erase this here, put in some nice brackets for ourselves, and just copy paste. OK. So let me go ahead and simplify one line here. But the big thing is that we can notice that this, these two integrals are the exact same. And that's what I was looking for. 
like I said, this will kind of wrap around on itself, that we'll have the integrals actually be the same here, and we'll be able to solve for these. So again, let me just simplify really quick. Uh, so when I distribute this negative 2, I get negative 2 e to the x hyperbolic sine of 2x. And then when I distribute the negative 2 again, I get positive 4, right? Because negative 2 times negative 2. And then the integral of e to the x hyperbolic cosine of 2x dx. Okay. So now, again, these two are the same. We should think of them just like as a variable, like an a or a different x sort of thing. So I'm going to subtract uh, it from both sides. So you can see I have four of these things on the right-hand side. So when I subtract them away, I'm going to have negative three of them on the left-hand side. And then the rest of it is all the same. So then finally, if I wanted to solve for this integral, well, the only thing I would have to do now is just move that negative 3 into the denominator, right? So I divide by negative 3 here, and voila! I have now solved for this thing, the integral of e to the x times hyperbolic cosine of 2x dx. Well, I guess I need a plus constant of integration. But that is my final answer. And it's kind of remarkable that this works, but you can take the derivative of this and you get back to where you started. So it actually does work. <laughs> All right, and that is the end of 7.1, Integration by Parts. Go ahead and get started on your web work homework, and I'll see you next time in 7.2. See you then.